Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 75 of the platform specific series of my Z80 assembly programming tutorials and we're looking at sound again on the computer's links again which is a bit of a weird system indeed. Now um, the computer's links works with its sound very much like the spectrum does and it has what I call beeper sound which means that we only have very basic sound functionality and we have to use our processor to generate the sound wave quite literally on the, the spectrum and the um, computer's links. Now um, basically if you don't know a sound wave will look like something like this and um, the um, distance between the wave, the wavelength, is going to change the actual sound. So if we want a high pitch sound, we want a very tight wavelength like this. And if we want a low pitch sound, we want a very long wavelength like this. And so the length of the wave will actually change the, um, the pitch. Now the other thing is the volume. Now the high to the wave will make a loud sound and a short wave will make a quiet sound. So um, we can actually control this. And on the computer's links, we can actually control both. We have a 6-bit volume setting to change the actual volume of the wave and uh, what happens is every time we write a value to the beeper port it actually effectively flips the wave and so by repeatedly writing to that port we can build a wave of the length we want for the pitch that we want. The problem is that that means we have to wait for very short periods of time and make that flip over and over again which pretty much uses all our CPU power. So that is the problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create this new thing that I call Chibi Sound Pro. Chibi Sound was my original um, sound driver which was very simple for beeps and very crude games like your Space Invaders type thing. Chibi Sound Pro is aimed at simple music and so it provides more functionality, supports multiple channels, supports volume levels, 8-bit 8, 8 volume levels and it supports a 16-bit pitch. It also supports a, a noise function on and off like before. The problem is our system today, while it can do volumes, it can't do multiple channels. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take all of the channels we've been told to set. We need to support at least three for the music software. And um, we will basically look at which is loudest and we will consider that to be the channel we're going to play and we'll ignore the other ones. So that's how we're going to do things. So that's what we've got. As I say, the um, Computers Links has a single port. We use the port 0084 in hexadecimal, or um, that bit combination. Um, the asterisks represent bits that are simply ignored. Those aren't actually wired up. So any um, port that matches that combination there will work as the sound port. Um, we need a, we, we use a 6-bit volume. The top bit needs to be 0. Bit 6, I believe, doesn't, it doesn't do anything, but the top bit does apparently need to be 0. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Let's go over to our source code and let's actually, um, let's first of all hear what we're going to be creating, why we're, this is worth doing. So, we've got our oscilloscope up. Got rather huge links for some reason. And you can hear this is the Chibi Akamas theme. Now this theme song was originally written in Arcus Tracker for the Amstrad CPC. It was the original game music. And what I did is I ported it to my own tracker, my Chibi Tracker. TV Tracker Pro um, by, by basically conversion is a conversion routine that can load in the ASM format files from Arcus 2. So I converted it and um, made a few tweaks to the instruments. The instruments had to be recreated, but then I was able to play the music with my own tracker. Now, the important thing about um, GB Tracks, the software for the Z80, is that it can actually play the same file on every different system. So this is the computer's links, but it's playing the same binary file as the Amstrad CPC did. Also the Spectrum Next, also the 6502 and the 68000 systems. These all play the same binary file. So you can write your song once, you can export your song once and you can play that file on every system supported by chibi tracks that's the theory anyway but the um the way that this is possible is because we have written a chibi sound pro sound driver for each platform which provides the functionality required okay so let's take a look at it well chibi sound pro uses uh, four bytes in three registers for its parameters h is the channel number in bits zero to six and the top bit is the noise on and off state L is the 8-bit is the eight bit volume, uh, and the pitch is a 16-bit DE value. So those are the four parameters we are going to pass. Now the computer's links has a special extra function called Chibi Sound Set ZX. This was also supported by the ZX Spectrum, and this sets the length of the tone because every time we do an update, there will be a, 
a delay to our game or our program that will actually play the tone. Now, a very long delay gives a very clear tone. I think the setting is currently set to 16, but if we were um, wanting our game to be quite fast, we might want to set that lower. For interrupt-driven sound on the ZX Spectrum, I found a, a setting of four worked quite nicely on that system. The, the music was still understandable, but it, it was fast enough that you didn't notice any significant performance drop. So that is that's a special function just for the peculiarities of the ZX Spectrum, shall we say. Now, the DE pitch, while um, a low value will be a low frequency and a high value will be a high frequency, um, that is not matched on each system. So what we have is a lookup table for each system for the notes in the octave and the correct values to use for DE. And the Chibi Track software actually looks up that to, to use the correct notes. And if you want a sharp or flat, you just take two values and divide them by two. Okay, so this is the set routine which initializes the um, channel. So we, we pass this with H, L and D, E for the volume, channel and pitch. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to update the sound cache. Now we need to simulate at least four channels, but we only have one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to store the values we've been asked to use in the cache, and then we're going to pick the loudest one to actually play. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to basically we're going to only use the bottom two bits of the channel number in theory we could have been given a value all the way up to 127 but we're going to, going to simulate four channels we need three to play the music so four is more than enough for that and then what we're going to do is we're going to select an entry in our sound cache there's four bytes per entry and we're simply going to store the four parameters we were passed into that for now so the channel number and the noise the volume and the frequency okay now, what we do then is we, we simply return, but uh, on the um, ZX Spectrum and on the computer's links in any system that needs processor interaction to actually keep the sound playing, we run the update routine. So we would update this every single time the interrupt occurred or every time the music needed to keep playing. So this is actually going to make the music play. And so what it's going to do is it's going to load in the sound cache and it's going to sequence through, it's going to read in all the parameters and then it's going to check to see if this channel is silent or not. Now, um, this one's actually, I thought it had been set up to play the loudest, but this one's actually been set up to play the lowest number channel. Now, um, that is actually a legitimate thing. It, it's, it's ignoring silent channels, but it's playing the first non-silent channel. I've sort of defined within my specification, if you will, of Chibi Sound Pro that you, the lower numbers take priority. So if you can only play a single channel, channel zero is the one to play. If you've got two channels, it's zero and one. If you've got 16 channels, it's zero to 15 and so on. So we're allowed to sort of decide how we do this. And in this case, we're playing the first non-silent channel here. So once we've found our channel, what we're basically going to do is we are going to now process the values in it and set up our sound loop to make the wave. As I say, we need to manually build a wave of some kind, depending on our volume and our frequency. So the first thing we're doing here is we are, we're going to store the noise value in L here and we are going to get our volume. Now our volume, um, as it's been loaded in here, because HL and L were busy, that's ended up in B. And so it's an 8-bit value, but we only want 6 bits. So we're bit shifting it. And then we're using self-modifying code to store it into this volume effect function here. Now, this is an AND function, which is going to just mask the value that we've got here and make sure that it's the correct size for the um, port of the computer's links. So that's what we're doing for the volume. Next, we're going to test the top bit of our channel number, and that is our noise setting. Now, if we are going to be playing a clear tone, basically, we're going to load the accumulator with that value there. And that is the bytecode for that command. If we're going to make a noise, we want a source of some relative random data. So we're going to load the AE register with the R register, which is constantly changing, and that's the code to do that there. Now, these will then be masked with our AND command to get the correct value for the, um, the, the volume and the port. So in either case, that will be fine. And then all we're doing is we're writing those two bytes for that command into this position here via self-modifying code. And you can see that the default tone one is already there. So that's how we are doing our noise. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically de decide on our frequency on our, the length of our wave. So a high pitch needs a shorter delay between the flips. And so we're going to calculate that here. Basically, we're going to take our 16-bit value here and convert it into this 10-bit value here. The, these bits aren't going to be used. So that's what we're doing here with these shifts. We're then XORing the two bits for the D value here and we're flipping the entire E value here. And so we've now got our 10 bit value, which is basically our delay. Now, because um, a value of zero would play up, we are then incrementing D and E here. 
uh, we're also setting H to the amount of time that we want the tone to sound. Now, um, we're going to change, ha have a lot of loops for a high frequency sound, but very few for a low frequency sound, but we want both sounds to be roughly the same length. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use H to count how, for how long we want to keep playing that tone. So we're incrementing all of those. Um, we're then storing DE via self-modifying code into our loop here. And then this is now our actual tone loop. So this is the code that's actually doing the job of making the sound. So we're loading A with the value here or that random value. We're then XORing with D. Now D is going to, in this case, be our value that is the previous value. This is going to be used to flip the sound. And so what we're going to do here is we're then going to mask to our volume level and we're then going to update D with the new value for next time. And then we're going to send the, the value we've just calculated to the sound port, which is going to create one of the parts of this wave. We're then going to delay for a small time. Now, this BC value here will have been modified with the value we calculated in DE here, all of this calculation here. So that is the time between, that's between the flips of the wave here. So the longer this is, the larger the wave, the lower pitch the tone. So that's what we're loading in here. But then what we're doing is we are loading H and we're subtracting the B part, the, the high part of the 16-bit value here. Now that is going to be a value from zero to three. And the reason we're doing that is we want our tone to be roughly the same length, whatever the frequency is. And so we're going to wait until that H part goes below zero. And when it does, we're going to return. And that roughly speaking means that whatever our frequency, that the tone will be something like the same length. It's not exact, but it's close enough to make the music sound okay. So that's what we're doing there. And then what we're doing here is we're decreasing our BC 16 bit pair here. And we're going to repeat until that reaches, uh, goes below zero. And then what we're doing here is we're jumping back to here and we're flipping that wave again. So we're building our wave one flip at a time here by repeatedly running this function here. And it's actually the H value going below zero that is the return state. Because I say this will go on forever until that H goes below zero. And that's how we are creating sound on this system. So there we go. So that is the end of this system. I think that's actually the last of the Z80 tutorials on, on Chibi Sound Pro and Chibi Tracks. Now, as I've been saying in my tutorials on this, I'm actually sort of done with the sound concept. It's gone um, way beyond what I need. So if you want to see me go further into Chibi Tracks, Chibi Sound Pro, or write more work on Chibi Tracks, please back me on Patreon because I've got other interests and they don't involve me writing multi-platform music software. So um, it, it's up to you. Um, the alternative is if you don't want to back me on Patreon, you can download the source code and you can do it yourself, for which um, I would totally encourage you to do it. I always say you're welcome to use the source code. You're welcome to make something better and you're welcome to distribute that in any way you want. And you're welcome to use it commercially. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.